What's going on everybody? It's Chris and Kate here, Profoto Live. Today we're gonna to be talking about short and broad light. So over the last few weeks, we released uh, a couple of IGTV videos, uh, just kind of like quick put together videos on how you do short light, one on how you do broad light, where we had a shoot involved. If you wanna go and check those out on our Instagram at Profoto, uh, you can actually uh, see the lighting setups there. But today we're gonna to have a live and talk about short and broad light in case maybe you missed the IG. Uh, Maybe you don't follow us over there. Maybe you should at Profoto. Uh, so, but we're gonna be talking about short and broad light, the uh, why you would wanna use one over the other. We're gonna demonstrate both of them. And if you have any questions about anything, just let us know. We'll be happy to chat with you about it. Um, so in the meantime, let's get to it. So we're gonna start off with, uh, let's talk about short light for uh, example. Well, actually, let's just talk about them uh, all together. So, I call short and broad light lighting techniques as opposed to lighting patterns, mostly because a lighting pattern changes the kind of the position of the light. Whereas when you're using short and broad light, you're changing the position of yourself as the photographer. So with, so like uh, your, your butterfly lights, your Rembrandt lights, your split lights, your loops, all that stuff like that, they can live within short and broad light. So depending on where your lighting position is, you could still be shooting loop light, but be shooting the broad side of your subject or the short side of your subject. So I call them techniques rather than lighting patterns. I know a lot of people like the, to call them lighting patterns. It's what do whatever you want to do. But that's just kind of how I operate with it. So short and broad light, like I said, are techniques and they're predicated by your camera placement, not so much light placement. So if I have this light right here, which is coincidentally enough, the light that we're gonna use when we take photos today. So say I'm facing like this, right? Lights right here, you're on the same side as the light from me. So you're gonna lock, oh yeah, sorry, I'm probably cutting off the camera. Okay. So you're probably, you're going to be lighting the broad side of me. So uh, we're, Actually, I wonder if I could just turn on the continuous light and you could see this. Let's just crank it up and see what happens. Power all the way up, maybe. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but I turned the continuous light on. So because your position on the same side of me as the light, you're gonna light the broad side. What changes is as soon as you change the camera position, by this we're gonna change the light position because I can't really change the video camera position. By changing the light position and being on the opposite, and you're also probably not gonna be able to see this because my main video light, uh, but. Do you know why? No, no, yeah, I mean, it's fine either way. But say my body position never changed. I was kind of always, you know, a quarter turn, like 45 degrees turn from the camera. So by now lighting on the opposite side of where the light is, you're gonna be lighting the short side. So there's gonna be less light on my face, more shadows, and so that's kind of how it works. So it's all camera placement based. So if, uh, and we'll, we'll toy around with it some more too here in just a minute with Kate, but that's how you get around short and broad light. You move yourself as opposed to you moving your subject. So that's once again, how you do the short and broad light. So it gets, they get their name from how much of the subject is lit. So your broad light, you're gonna be lighting up uh, a lot of that subject, you're gonna be on the same side as of the subject as that light, it's gonna be broadly lit. Whereas your short light, once again, there's less light hitting the subject, therefore you're shooting, it'll be on the short side of the subject, though it, it's tinier. So reasons to use broad and short light. So let's start, let's talk short light first. So short light is really, really good for creating drama because of the amount of light that isn't in the shot. Uh, it's also really, really good for people like me who have round faces. I have this gigantic watermelon head and short light's gonna give the appearance of narrowing my face because there's gonna be less light on it. So if you have someone who may have a more narrow face, maybe a longer, narrower face, you might wanna use broad light for them because it's gonna light more of their face and it's gonna help even things out some. So it's one of those things personal preference, but also looking at your subject and deciding how this technique is going to uh, help with lighting your subject based off of their, their facial features their, their, or their, their shape. It's just, these are the things you're gonna keep in your head while you're deciding how you're gonna light your subject, right? So cool. So uh, your short light's gonna be more dramatic. Your broad light's gonna be 
lighter, airier, maybe a little more vibrant just because of the amount of light that's inside the scene. So that's your kind of your differences. So short light, lots of drama, less light on your subject. So it's going to help uh, thin out your subject. Uh, and then broad light is going to be light, airier, a little more vibrant. It's going to help fill out your subject uh, because there's going to be more light on them. Broad light is also really, really good too. So uh, if you have a subject who may have complexion issues, maybe they have some scars on their face and you wanna fill those in, broad light has a tendency to help fill a lot of that stuff in, where short light, because it's coming from the other side, uh, it can uh, cause some more shadowing. So it, it may accentuate those. So once again, just things to think of. If, you, if, it's, if it's not a big deal and you're like, I'm gonna retouch it out later anyway, cool, more power to you. But if you're trying to minimize that kind of stuff, that's another thing that may help you. So uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna do, uh, we're, gonna have, we're gonna take a photograph. We're going to, um, we're going to <laughs> shoot it. Do you know what you're gonna do? Well, I just looked over the comments and said something was freezing. Oh no, we're and I, good. And I, I went yeah. back and double checked, so. Sorry James, you might wanna check your connection. Yeah, I see, I see, uh, what's up Sweden? Linnea, hopefully I said that right. My man Anthony's up in here, what's up? Uh, and Jess, what's happening? James, how you doing? Sarah, Ra. hi, hi. Cool, so we're gonna light this now. So it's, it's not anything too intense, but once again, I'm gonna show you how to do it live. So I've got Kate, she's gonna come in here. All righty. All right, cool. She's gotta decouple herself from I am all connected the things. to lots of things yes. here. Ooh, we get to use this cool new thing, guys. You yep. ready? So All we right. have, um, we upgraded our equipment. It's one of the reasons we've been on yeah. hiatus. We've been working through some new stuff. So we can do kind of like this three up. So you can see the screen. You can see, let me turn this down. Um, yeah, it does, Will. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to be doing here, it's a large, by the way, sir. Thank you. Better check yourself. Um, <laughs> but what we're gonna do here, uh, like I said, with the new equipment, we have three up, so you're gonna be able to kind of see Kate right here in the tight shot and see how, how the light's gonna move around. You have the wide there, and then you can see the actual screen itself. <clears throat> Felt that coming on, Bless I apologize. You. Cool. I'm gonna mute myself. So for the most part, I'm gonna try to keep the light uh, in the, no. It's probably, gonna, it's probably gonna change on the background a little bit just because I have this, this uh, striped background. But um, we'll see what's going on there. So cool. So we have that. My light's there. I have my camera. Kate's double checking the signal. Yeah. yeah I'm just it's all good. All solid. We're good. Cool. So the first shot I'm going to take is just I'm going to go TTL just to make sure um, we are we have a proper exposure. So I'm gonna turn off my fill light as well. We're just gonna keep it with one light for right now so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So face towards the light right here, Caitlin. Let's go right here. Face maybe like 45 here, like right there you go, cool. So we're gonna take this TTL shot and make sure everything's flattened out, perfect. So I'm gonna to go to F8, 250 of a second, ISO 160 on the camera, kind of my go-to stuffs. So here we go. Three, two, one. Cool, perfect TTL shot, looks beautiful. So, sweet. So, for a broad light shot, I would shoot on the same side as Kate. So let's do this really fast. So let's go, so the light's on this side of Kate, I'm gonna shoot the same side. It's kind of in my way, I'm gonna have to lift it up a little bit. There we go, here we go. How are we doing over there? A little cashy. So three, two, one. And without doing anything other than changing my camera position, this will change a whole bunch. And granted the background's not gonna be in this, but you'll see what I'm talking about. So short light. So the lighting position never changed. I just changed where I was uh, in relationship to that light. So opposite side, you have more shadows. You're lighting the short side. And then, hold on, let me get you, get them side by side so you can see it. Command, shift, bop. So there you go. So same exposure on the shot. Difference is...
going to manage that real fast, Caitlin? Are we good? Perfect. We have a making sure that we're still feeding out. So let me pull this back here so we can talk. About so simple thing to do. It's just about where you relationship to the light. So once again, that kind of light airy thing right here because there's a lot of light on Kate. You can see that it, it fills in nicely any imperfections that may be there. She's perfect though, so it's you know there's nothing going on. Gonna, gonna endear myself. Um, then you can see once you, you move the camera around to the opposite side, you now are gonna start introducing more shadows in the shot. There's a little more drama there. Uh, it's these, this really awesome background that I chose uh, with the windows. It really, really sells the story. So yeah, it's a really easy technique. So placement is huge. It's one of the biggest parts of broad light stuff your sh your broad light once again that light and airy feeling is going to come from the amount of light on your subject it's hitting the of your subject they're they're heavily lit that's shooting on the exact same side that your light is once again if you want to go to something a little more dramatic or if you're trying to narrow you can go to the short light side because is going to draw Atten your attention's always drawn to the brighter spot of a, a scene. So when there's less bright spot, it appears. That's kind of how that illusion works with the eye with short light. So you can see the difference between looking at Kate here with the broad light and the short light. Her face clearly looks a little fuller here, looks a little thinner here, and that's just the presence of light and shadow. So it's the thing that makes So once again, your short light's gonna Introduce more drama into the shot. That's just because of the prevalence of the shadows, because you're shooting the opposite side that the light's coming from. And that's how you achieve the short and broad light. So it's a really, really easy thing to do. You can set your light up. So if you wanted to shoot, once again, if you wanted to shoot more of a butterfly style light, uh, butterfly is gonna be a little bit harder to do with short and broad light because it's, it's heavily dependent on that shadow under the nose. So usually uh, butterfly light's a broad light technique because you you kind of have to shoot right up underneath the light but once you start getting into like paramount light which is the same thing as butterfly light just off to the side uh like the light placement to the subject is the exact same but it's um but it's just because you can't see that butterfly shadow under the nose it's not technically butterfly so but paramount light which is the same idea as having the light directly at the subject Paramount light, loop light, Rembrandt light, split light, all of that stuff can be achieved with both of these. So if you wanted to split light somebody but have more light on them, you go the broad light spectrum. Just make sure you're shooting from the same side that the light's coming from. If you want to shoot loop light but you want a little more drama, just make sure you're shooting from the opposite side that the light's coming from and just place it so where you still have that loop by the nose. So you can use all those lighting techniques that you know and love and then you can wrap them into a short or broad light wrapper Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Do we have any questions? Um, oh, let's see. Oh, uh, we um we in in the the change of all, all this new equipment and stuff too. We've mic'd up Kate so she can tell me if there's any questions. All right, you can hear me now. Yep. Let's see. So outdoor photography videos that would do yes like waterfalls, flowers. Yeah, so we're working, we're working on a way of getting our rig outside. Uh, we're just working through that whole process. It requires some, some extra power and stuff like that. We're working on it. Uh, just bear with us. So we're still doing some studio stuff. We're working on getting it outside. There's just a lot involved. Uh, we're trying to figure out how to streamline that process and uh, make it to where we can set up and break down quite easy and still bring you the production value. So let's see. Just hi, 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 hi. Oh, just hellos, cool. Yeah, we're all good. So like I said, nothing too crazy intense. It's a really easy concept. So I know, I think I've recapped before, but let's just go through a really fast recap one more time, especially with the photos up. If you want to achieve your broad light right here, which is that light, airy, vibrant feeling, it's really, really good for taking someone with a narrower face and broadening them out a little bit more or, or making them appear a little wider. So it's really great for people with narrow faces, trying to maybe even out with another person who might be a little bit broader, you can put them on the opposite side and, and put the person who you're trying to on the light side first. Cool. So it's really, really good for making narrow things wider. 
and really all you want to do with that is make sure that you're shooting on the same side as the light. Your short light is going to be because of the presence of the shadow. Really, really good for people with rounder faces, like I said myself. Uh, if you want to thin that out a little bit, you just want to put the light on the opposite side. Really, really simple stuff. And then once again, whatever lighting technique inside of that, you're good to go. But that's it. I mean, pretty straightforward Facebook Live. It's a pretty easy one for coming back. If you want to see, so the, the card shot that we had up uh, when you saw the original live, if you want to see how Kate and I shot those photos, uh, you can go and check out the short and broad light uh, photo on uh, Pro Photo's Instagram, it's just at Pro Photo. And under the IGTV section, uh, we have, we talk about short and broad light, but I also show you the building process of the shot. So you can see it with one light, two lights, and three lights. So how we, how we build all that stuff out. And at the very end of the video, you can actually see the BTS shot. So if you wanna see what the behind the scenes look like, you can go and check that out there as well. I think we've also shared some of this stuff in the Share the Light group on Facebook. So in the meantime, any other questions? Are we good? No. Perfect. Good. So in the meantime, I hope you have an awesome rest of your week. Thank you all so much for coming and tuning in. Uh, we'll be continuing this further on. And if you have any questions, anything you'd like to see, we know you want to see some outside stuff. We're working on that. But anything else, let us know, and we will do it. Peace out, everybody.